Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the VTech Academy. You're about to get schooled. Yep. Recently, Hasport has been doing a lot of all-wheel drive mounts. And along with your all-wheel drive engine mounts, you're going to need all-wheel drive rear differential and everything. And uh, we have decided to take a look at that. I know there are a couple companies that are working or have working prototypes of the kit. Uh, the ones I was looking at, I wasn't particularly thrilled with. So I thought maybe we'd take a look at it and see what the big deal was and how difficult it was. So uh, what I have here is I have my CRX on the lift and I have a wagon, EF wagon rear subframe, the smaller subframe, differential, the mounts, I have uh, the lower control arms with the axle, and I wanted to kind of compare them all and see if it was a bolt-in deal or if there was going to re be required a little bit more than that. So, uh, uh, you know a couple of people have been doing all-wheel drive conversions. Obviously, this doesn't bolt in. We found that the this uh, lower control arm is longer. It's taller. Uh, this subframe, there's no place to bolt it right. into. It's actually quite a bit farther back. Uh, what have people been doing? Well... We would love for this just to be a bolt-in deal, yeah. right? Because then we'd be like, well, how come people haven't been doing this already? But it's not, it has been a fabricating kind of ordeal, you know? So somebody who's really into the work, literally, is right. the one that's doing this. So as of right now, like this thing is kind of monstrous compared to what I've seen guys do. All right, so this kind of like dips underneath <laughs> the uh, differential, whereas the stuff I've been seeing they're really making like a cross beam across here, right? Mm -hmm. And so, well, if we compare what we got here to like the wagon, this would, the wagon bolts in this area, and then you have that lower cross member deal. But theirs is kind of similar to what's over here. But to get all of this, like cutting all of this out, right? You know, all this out, and that means there's gonna be a fuel cell, or something obviously, we don't we have a problem for the drive line to come through, only have a gas tank also. So it's quite the, with the project right. along with the, the trailing arms as well all right so the trailing arms physically is a is a bit longer than um you know when you're comparing yeah, we have them a stock one right here when you're comparing them so i'm just kind of like put them up you know spindle to spindle or maybe actually back here at any rate it's hard to see but it is it is shorter so it doesn't make it a bolt-on deal and uh, it's the wagon's actually taller as well yeah you see look how much shorter oh, it is. for sure Right so again, another thing that guys are doing as of now, or up to now, they were mating the two together. They're sectioning it off and adding, adding this rear half to the front half, and then they're shortening this down some more. You know, uh -huh. and so far, you know, that's been what they've been doing. But now, since this craze, you know, it really is from the drag racing scene. I've really seen it explode. Yeah, you got a couple guys going really, really fast. Right? right, and from that is when I seen the explosion, at least in my community. Mm -hmm. And now guys, I was like, all right, we're looking, taking a look at this. We're going to build something. So right. I think that's where you decided you're going to come in and you know, at least try, try to do it. something. Right. Yeah, I, a couple things I've noticed right off the bat. I mean, just looking at the construction generally, you see where the, this would be where the axle would be, and you can see it's right in line with the lower control arm. Uh, if you look at this one right here, this would where, be where the center line is. That's quite a bit farther back. So obviously this has been moved back. Uh, probably only about that far, but it's been moved back. Uh, that means that this rear subframe also brings the lower control arm back. Because these control arms are the same. Wagon, EF sedan, CRX, the they're all the same. Are, yeah. yeah, the control arms are the same. So, uh, and it, this is interesting too. If you look at this, right now we have the control arm mounts resting on the ground, and the subframe basically goes that low. So if you came up here to this, basically our subframe, even though it drops down, would only be this low. Sure. So that means the dip is mounted up quite a bit higher, you know, basically in this area where the, the right. fuel tank so is. It's this void for the spare tire that's making it like kind of a lot, an optical illusion. That yeah, that's actually an optical illusion. Yeah. Right, exactly. Okay. So, and, uh, you know, the wagon's longer, so the spare tire all sits like this, sure. and uh, but there's a lot more room. The fuel tank is quite a bit farther forward. In fact, there's another subframe, this one right here, which would mount 
right up in here on that car. Yeah. And then, of course, the there's a big hole in the uh, um, in the gas tank. Basically, the gas tank looks more like a saddle. Yeah. You know. So clearly, you're right. You said it's going to require a fuel cell. Yeah. It's going to require some other stuff. Uh, there seems to be a few places you can mount stuff like. There's these tow hook areas and the sway bar mounts. I don't know if they're like that on the EG. I guess we're going to put an EG and EK up here and take a look at that because yeah. it would be nice to use existing uh, bolt holes in order to uh, bolt something up in there. But I think what's going to have to happen is we're going to use these lower control arms to locate the new setup and probably have to you know, make some cuts in here. Although we might be able to go in front of it and avoid cutting it all together. Um, we'll just have to see. I mean, off the top of my head, I'm thinking if we just simply took this control arm and mounted it to the back side of this, to the back side of that, that might not change the geometry enough to cause an ill handling car and might actually kind of work. Um, <clears throat> that's a little farther than the, the wagon goes, but that might be the, the quick and easy solution. Uh, of course, the shocks would uh, need to mount a little bit differently. Well, they, clearly we've got a little bit of stuff to do um, if we want to make something like this. And, and other people have been doing it for a while and have come up with their own solutions. Uh, looking at the control arm, I think that's actually going to be the hardest thing to manufacture. Because the control arm, if you want to keep the same geometry, you want to have the large bushing up front, you want to have the, the, uh, the toe links up front, you want to have the lower control arm, the upper control arm. You want all those in <coughs> close enough to the same position that they're not going to, uh, you know, it's not going to change this, the geometry enough to cause a car to handle poorly. You know, these cars handle well. So, on top of just taking a look at this, yeah. Am I hearing that maybe Hosport is considering building something for back here? Oh yeah, for sure. So we have guys that are out there making the stuff already. Um, you thought maybe this was a bolt-on deal, but looking at it, it's not so no. much. But quality <laughs> bolt in part from Hosport, that sounds exciting. Well, it's funny, you know, I actually would almost like to farm out the lower control arms. Originally, I was thinking we could modify stock control arms, but I don't think there's any advantage to that. I think a wholly fabricated part would be a good idea. Sure. And in that way, you could kind of choose your uh your hub a little bit more easily because there's a there's crv hubs and element hubs which are made by the hundreds of thousands so that might actually be a better better choice in the long run but there may also be some other aftermarket choices as well yeah i i'm interested in making the diff carrier and everything that bolts in this area and getting it all set up properly for the you know so the geometry stays as close to original as possible honestly I want you to be able to jump this car when it's done, not just drag race it. I, I look at it as not just a drag racing thing, but also as a, a jumping a thing. Well, as a rally car. That's why. You know, as a rally car. Yeah. I would like to man, take it to the Evos and the Subarus and, and show them that a Honda can compete. Uh, My mind just went wild at seeing all, like, EG's lifted now and doing all the things. <laughs> yeah. It's pretty crazy. Maybe some KC lights on top, you know, or yeah. the front grill. <laughs> I, I want to do that with that ready K out there. Wow. I think that'd be kind of cool. So, all right. Well, I guess uh, uh, let's take away look at the way the engine bolts in. Yeah. talking like dented that much like right here if you can see that right there so like if you've done a b-series swap on an ef 
you bang in the frame rail to get the alternator to fit. I mean, that's what we're working with right here on the, the subframe, OEM subframe. This is boss. Yeah. It could be cut away. Yeah, yeah. So you could actually just grind a little clearance for that. Sure. So guys that are doing H to PE swaps, they they have to do all that anyway. Right? right. And so if you really want an all-wheel drive transmission in your EF, like what is that really? You yeah. Know? A little clearance here. Right. So you wouldn't even have to clearance the subframe. The subframe, just just the material. Right. I mean, if you were scared to dig into the casing, then you could dent that. Yeah. But I mean. But these are basically mounting bosses. This is yeah. this engine mounts in this car. I'm not in this car. This engine mounts in the CRV with a bracket that bolts to the back of the block. Now that bracket is strengthened, obviously, because it holds the engine. We're not going to be holding it there. We're going to be holding it up higher up on the block. So, basically, I can make a mount that works with a cord transmissions, TSX transmissions, 2012 Civic transmissions, and all-wheel drive transmissions, and basically it'll be the same. Yeah, the same. Maybe. Maybe one bracket, maybe two brackets, but yeah. Cool, all right, well, let's work on that now. I'm gonna grab that torque mount out of the K-Link kit. Yeah, I'm gonna slide it in there. That's right, because that one was made for the KV. Yeah. So it looks like I can. So this bracket we've got right here, we made for a K series lean kit actually. It appears that we might be able to make a slightly modified version of it to work with this. We'd want to angle that down. Mm -hmm. That tab still needs to be on there, even though it doesn't work for all-wheel drive. It does work for the uh, cord transmission and the uh, 2012 Civic SI transmission. Although I suppose we could make one that was just for the all-wheel drive. So this is pretty exciting because it, <laughs> this is pretty exciting because it looks like that all it's going to require from stuff that's already off the shelf is just a rear bracket. So that means this could be in in production pretty fast. Yeah, production. Fast production. Yeah. Right now, this bracket was meant for our EF lean kit into the, uh, um, I'm sorry, using the Accord transmission. Yes. So, yeah, because this this one grabs the block opposed to the transmission. Right. Right. Exactly. So, it has this like extra bolt hole over here that actually goes into the back of an Accord transmission or 2012 Civic transmission. So. Oh man, it's so close. So, <laughs> yeah, look at that. So we just need to determine where this hole is. And I can basically redraw this now with that hole. And we're done. Yeah. So actually it's gonna be really easy to make a mount kit for this. I'm pretty stoked, so mm -hmm. we just need to figure out how to measure that. I suppose we could do it from underneath the car, probably be the easiest. The one thing you have to worry about this torque rod is you gotta understand that the engine's gonna be pivoting. This is gonna make like an axis, okay? The forces of the axles are gonna cause the engine to shift forward, pivoting around this axis. So we want this torque rod to be pretty much at a right angle. If you were to draw a straight line through the axis down towards this torque rod, you want it to be kind of at a right angle. So we want it dipped down about like that. And that actually puts it really close to some of the holes that are already down there. So basically we just take this bracket right here, make a few fine tuning adjustments to it, give it dual height so that we can mount it high or low depending on whether you're a K20 or K24, and done. So let's uh, let's pull it up in the air and see if we can figure out where the bolt holes are. The bolt goes through, I mean, it's right there. So because you actually can see that, that means it's gonna be really easy to find really easy to where find. that hole is, because yeah. we could already see the edge. So you could just draw an imaginary line from what we see 
and continue that around, we'd be able to find the center hole. And then once we find that center hole, then we just add the hole right above it in the same right the same geometry. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, sweet. Hey guys, uh, so this is uh, the rear bracket that we came up with. It'll probably actually fit straight onto the DA because if I recall correctly, I use the same rear bracket for the uh, uh, DA on the normal K series. So this may just bolt right on there and work perfectly. I'm gonna have to try that in a car and I'll let you guys know if it works for the DA as well. Anyway, uh, thank you very much for tuning in to another episode of E-Tech Academy. If you like us, please hit the subscribe button down below. Also, hit the little bell, and that'll give you a notification anytime a new video comes out. Uh, if you'd like to help support us so that we can do more projects, head on over to the VTech Academy website, which is vtech.academy or vtechacademy.com, and purchase one of our really cool t-shirts. That helps us bring you more videos. Also, don't forget to share us, and we'll catch you later. Well, I think something like this calls for a celebration because you do know what today is. Taco Tuesday. Nice. Dos Gringos? Dos Gringos. Let's go.